want to talk a bit about the Mohammed Al Fayed allegations, but not so much focusing on the specifics of it and the details. I haven't read it extensively, so I'm not in a position to to do that. I'm not even going to read out an article as I often do, at least not yet. Um, but Al Fayed has posthumously been accused of. Um, all sorts of uh, sexual misconduct, including as serious as rape by a number of uh, women. Um, I say posthumously accused. Actually, some of these allegations were going on before, but it's it, it's kind of escalated in recent days. Um, I want to talk about attitudes around this, because if you look at the news reports on this, online news reports, the comment threads are, are full of people saying, why now? You know, they're just trying to gain money. They're just, it's basically a knee-jerk, cynical attitude. Um, the implication being is, oh, if it really happened, they should have made the, alle the allegations when he was alive. But I think there's a lot of ignorance in this sort of knee-jerk reaction because if we look at the Jimmy Savile case, high-profile case, um, what happened? His young victims did try to raise a voice, they did try to complain, and they were dismissed, shamefully dismissed, as as being attention seekers by the BBC and other powerful people. And that was the 70s, but, you know, that was the attitude that they faced. And even today, even after all the Me Too stuff, we still have this attitude of just assuming that women who make claims must be looking for money or must be seeking attention. My question would be, would anyone put themselves through that, all that scrutiny and all that um, backlash, if they were just making it up, if they were just looking for money? I'm not sure that they would. So there's a number of things to point out with this. I, I don't know if Al Fire was guilty or not. I'll be honest, I didn't I never got a good vibe from the guy. Not so much for that reason, but I just I just found him arrogant in interviews and so on. And the uh, the way he pushed based his conspiracy theories against the royal family was, you know, said a lot. Um I I never got a good vibe from Al Fayed. I did think he had an arrogant streak. Um I, I get the impression he always had a bit of a chip on his shoulder because he, he was an Egyptian and he sort of had this idea that he wasn't being treated fairly by the British establishment and X, Y and Z. Um, I'm not going to get into a big biography of Al Fayed. People know why he's famous, they know the connections there, so I'm not going to go there. But um, that's, you know, arrogance doesn't equate to being a sexual predator, but you have to consider that there's a number of complaints here. It isn't one woman, it isn't two women, it's quite a few at this point. Um, Fulham Football Club has, Club has come out and said that they protected young female players from Al Fayed. The fact that they felt the need to announce that is interesting. It's almost like they're saying we're not surprised. Um, Al Fayed, of course, owned uh, Fulham Football Club among his other endeavours he had. Oh, and Harrods as well for a while. It's no longer in his name. But um, I do have a problem with this knee-jerk way of basically smearing accusers. Now, we know that false accusations happen. That's why I've never endorsed this mantra of believe all women. False accusations do happen. Um, we saw that with the Cliff Richard case. Um, and I do strongly believe in due process. Al Fayed obviously can't defend himself. He died last year, um, about a year ago, actually. Um, I think he died on my birthday last year. He can't defend himself. But people say, you know, why did they not come forward at the time? My understanding is actually they did. Um, but this has all come up now because there have been these simultaneous claims. Now, you're either there for the conclusion that this is some sort of conspiracy, that all these women are working together to try and get money out of Harrods or or the Al Fayed estate. Um, but I think it's more likely that some of them bravely came forward than the others felt emboldened to do likewise because they thought, well, it's, it's coming to light now and maybe this time will be believed. Um, it's true that Al Fayed isn't going to face justice. He's dead. You can't try a dead man. But it will affect legacy. And, you know, if there are payouts, then... 
frankly, that's the least that these women deserve. I mean, people just seem to have, and it's not just men, a lot of women are saying, oh, why now? And just immediately having this knee-jerk reaction that they must be just seeking money or attention seekers. Um, I think that's really unfortunate. It's utterly lacking empathy. And what bothers me about it is this assumption that people have that it is easy to make claims against a powerful tycoon. I mean, do they really think it's easy for a young woman to stand up against someone like Ma- to someone like Mohammed Al Fayed, with the power he has? You know, multi-billionaire, power he had, I should say, multi-billionaire, um, numerous properties in his name. You know, institutions in his name. He's a powerful figure. Same with Harvey Weinstein, and the same with other powerful men who have had these accusations against them. Um, I just think that it's not a case of saying, oh, they're definitely telling the truth, but at least they should be given some some assumption of, you know, honest intentions that they want to get justice. I don't, I think these cynical approaches of just saying, well, why now, utterly negates the situation that they are in. And I would challenge people, especially other women, frankly, to have a little bit more empathy. Try putting yourself in their position Let's imagine it did happen. And, you know, what are they going to do if Al Fayed was their boss? They can go to the police, but they don't know will the police take them seriously or not. Um, you know, Al Fayed's probably, I wouldn't rule out corruption. Um, I was going to say he's the sort of person that could pay off the police. The Metropolitan Police is not above corruption, and their own record in dealing with misogyny is far from uh, glittering. So, you know, I, I just think it's unfortunate that people automatically want to attack the accusers without giving them serious thought. I'm not saying they should be just blindly believed, but they should be at least given some respect and some assumption that they're trying to seek justice. Um, I mean, it, granted, it's going to be hard to prove this at this point. I don't know how they're going to do it if they'd be, I mean, the guy died, so I, I don't know how it can be proven. But I know that Harrod has officially apologised. You know, they didn't deny the claims. Um, that in itself surely is... It may, people might say that's just a, a consequence of the Me Too thing. Now, I'll just close this by saying I, I didn't entirely endorse Me Too. I didn't like the mantra of believe all women because, like I say, it, it assumes that all women are telling the truth. You do get false accusers and you do get situations where innocent men are falsely accused. And, you know, they lose their job, they lose their reputation, unfairly so. But you also get many cases of women who genuinely have been victims and they're not taken seriously and they're immediately dismissed as attention seekers or greedy. That is utterly wrong. It's abhorrent, in fact. So people need to step back a little bit and not just rush to judgment on this and just assume that the women making these allegations are cynically looking for a payout or something. It could well be the reason they're doing it now after he's died is because he was scary. He was a powerful tycoon. Maybe even in his 90s, he was still an intimidating figure. So people shouldn't just assume that they're motivated by cynical ends. Maybe they're motivated by justice. Um, and I have to say, I I just think the chances that this is some sort of conspiracy where they're all grouping together to smear his reputation, I just don't think that's plausible guess it's possible but i veer more on the side of believing them quite frankly because um we know it from history we know other powerful men have done this and got away with it um so at the very least even if people don't believe them they shouldn't be so dismissive and just say oh they're looking for a payout especially other women the lack of empathy from other women is quite striking um it doesn't mean that they're telling the truth i'm just saying there should be a degree of um, empathy there or even if not empathy sympathy I just see a regressive attitude from this um, I mean, people who are defending Al-Fayed they don't know he's innocent they, they just don't know that 